The line judge, Roger Rogers. The field judge, Bill Brown. John Lewis is the side judge, and the back judge is Larry Weeks. It's about 53 degrees uh, at the present time uh, in Austin. The wind's out of the northeast at 8, so they are negligible. 85% humidity. The temperature is not expected to get up more than about 57 or 8, as you see Jim Wacker trying to keep warm as he leads his coaching staff across the way. And you know, it has been a cold season so far for Jim uh, Barry Warner. Certainly uh, not one that he anticipated when uh, the club got off uh, to the start. Now, Wacker has taken a great deal of heat, but the man stands tall with that capital T. He knew what was going to happen when he booted those kids off the squad, and he hopes that the foundation has been laid. No question about it, the TCU staff has been so well received in homes throughout the, the state of Texas with regard to recruiting, Greg, and he knows beyond a shadow of a doubt the experience these guys are going to get now, two years from now, when they come back in Austin, they'll remember when they may have been pushed around as a freshman. They certainly remembered last week in the ball game you and Ray Auburn did when they lost uh, to the uh, to Tolliver and the Texas Tech Red Raiders. The Longhorns, of course, heavy favorites, as they have been for about the last 18 years. Last year, the Longhorns won it 44-23, to 23, uh, which uh, was a little bit of a dent, but uh, it was a big win for Fred Akers. Fred uh, has his team... Uh, Playing very well uh, right now, and don't forget, before the season began, so many of the so-called experts say, oh, middle of the league, wrong. They're back up at the top of first, second, or third, just like uh, they normally always are. We're getting set for the kickoff. Texas uh, Ward will kick off. Late, late back Jeff Ward. You think anything bothers him? He hasn't changed since the time he broke in as a freshman. It, it was number two against number three, Auburn against Texas, and he goes... What's the big deal? It's just a football game. Nothing phases him at all. He and his uh, opposite number or rival on the other side, Ken Ozzy, both have a chance to establish some records today. And if they uh, kick a few field goals, we'll tell you about that. Getting set for the uh, opening kickoff. As we have Petrie and Brooks back. And it will be coming down at the goal line taken by Petrie. Petrie turns the ball up to about the 23-yard line where it'll be put in play first and 10 for TCU at that position. Here's the expected offensive starting lineup for the Texas Christian University Horn Frogs coming into play today. Take a look at them in just a second as they huddle up uh, back on the 15-yard uh, line. Rasco, David Rasco, the quarterback, Jeffrey and Davis, they'll do most of the running. Keith Burnett, uh, Gary Ford, and Ricky Stone. Uh, we'll start Reggie Davis, as Barry indicated, is not here due to a death in the family. The offensive line, Laswell, Smith, Nix, uh, Sheehan, and Brazil, and that's the change. Uh, Sheehan will not be in there, I don't believe, and Nix will be moved over to the uh, guard spot. Tracy Simeon will be in the middle as we get set to uh, get this game underway. Sheehan had a severe uh, shin injury last week and uh, not expected to see action. Now we have an injury on the Texas side already. See if we can't pick up who that is as soon as the number is uncovered. Hey, those, uh, those kickoff plays, and this one doesn't look too good. They're bringing a stretcher out. Those kickoff plays are brutal. No, they don't call the suicide squad, Greg, for nothing. And Texas can ill afford with ball games coming up against the Baylor Bears and against A&M to lose football players. Akers has been very concerned about the lack of depth in his football team. Okay, the player down apparently is Al Pawlik, a... Uh, senior defensive end out of Houston, Jersey Village, 22 years old. That's uh, the apparent uh, situation down there. Number 84, that's who it is. That's who is down. And they're taking their time with uh, Al. As well they should. They've got one leg straight, as you can see, so it uh, quite likely is a leg injury. It's very similar to what we saw last week to Tommy Sheehan, the uh, right guard for TCU. They they took their time with him at Tech, and we thought he had a broken leg. As it turned out, he had a severe shin bruise, but he was, uh, they were very careful with him. Fred, of course, losing a member of his uh, kickoff unit. And uh, Let's see. It's 
way I'm going to sway for a football game to begin. You, know, you, you, you wait for that kickoff. You get things pumping. Uh, the tickers are pumping on all these guys. They're ready to go out there, and all of a sudden, you got to hold the game up for a few minutes. We certainly hope that uh, the youngster is okay. We'll try to pass on any uh, preliminary report as soon as we get the information up on the field. Well, as you can see, they've got the leg elevator, and he does uh, draw a hand from the crowd as he leaves the field. Notice that uh, Reed is in for uh, Chalmer Adams. We haven't taken a look at the defensive unit for Texas yet, but there will be one change from what you're going to see on the screen. Reed is in for Adams at one of the uh, tackle spots, the right tackle spot, as we're all set to go here. First down now. Pat Bradford, number 32, is in the lineup. The give, however, goes to uh, Jeffries. Uh, Tony uh, will carry the ball most of the time, and he gains short yardage. A uh, pick of about three yards on the play. Second down and seven. Greg, we're going to look at the same typical Texas defense, the 4-3. Bill Re Royal ran it for years. Fred Akers does the same. So fundamentally sound, they probably make adjustments as well as any defensive scheme in college football. Gary Ford leaves the lineup. We've got the uh, two-man backfield as Rasko is going to try to throw. Quick pass is, let's see, was he in? Rasko's no, he was not. It was uh, incomplete. Stephen Bragg was right there on the uh, coverage of the pass intended for Keith Burnett. So it's third down and seven. Now, this uh, long yardage situation as we see the Texas defensive line. By golly, we got Rocky Reed in there. Rocky is starting at right tackle. McKinney, Espinosa, and Bronner, the rest of the people up front. High Allert, Hager, and Dulevan, the linebackers. Third down from the 28. As we have a third down and about seven. Rasko on the option. Pitches back. Jeffrey cuts inside. Only about a yard gain. He is brought down there by James McKinney, and it'll be fourth down. Also coming up was Richard Peavy from his weak safety spot, and TCU will have to kick it away. Fourth down. Fourth down. Chris Becker is in, and Metcalf is back to uh, return this uh, kick. Metcalf will take it at about the 27-yard line. Got a good block to swing to the outside, the 35, 40, and he's run out of bounds at about the 46-yard line. Eric Metcalf. Greg, by the time it's all said and done, Eric Metcalf may erase some of his dad's marks in the National Football League. What great quickness for the former Virginia High School quarterback. He catches the ball, not well, he doesn't let the ball come to him, he goes and gets it, waits for a while to start, and then accelerates. The kid can cut and stop on a dime, got a good block there, and we're gonna be calling his name for many, many years to come here in the Southwest Conference. He got a 20 yard return on that uh, punt. As you see, the ball spotted just shy of the 48 yard line, where it'll be first down for Texas, their first possession of the game. We have a, apparently an official's uh, timeout down on the field, which is just about expired. 13 minutes and 47 seconds remaining in the first period. We're just underway. And there, of course, is no score. Texas first possession, Brett Stafford, the quarterback, running out of the eye formation. He has Hunter and Norris. Norris, the fullback, directly behind Stafford. Stafford rolls left. He'll keep it. He's got the first down and more. Pick up of nearly 15 yards for Stafford. Run out of bounds on the far side by Philanda Newton, the free safety, but not until great yardage picked up. That was about a 12-yard pickup. Watch the, the pump fake it. here with the left hand. That makes the play work. He'll roll left. He's got pump it a little bit. All of a sudden, the safety clears out. The corner clears out. And Benson, who's their answer to the refrigerator, simply too slow from the backside. Not a bad block by Russell Hayes, number 14, the flanker. It's first down. Ball on the 39-yard line. And the give goes to Hunter. Hunter cuts back inside after the hole off tackle was closed. A pickup of only a couple of yards for Hunter. Mitchell Benson and Kent Trammell combining on that stop. Number 95, Benson. There's the Texas uh, starting unit. Stafford, Norris, Hunter, McCray, and Gay. Edison, Chilton, Chester, Stewart, the Texas offensive line. And uh, Rick Houston uh, was doubtful, but he is in the starting lineup. He had a pinched nerve in his neck. Second down at eight. Stafford's ball is in the air. Incomplete, just overthrown, intended for number 19, Everett Gay. Tony Brooks was nearby, 
but the pass was just a little bit in front of Everett Gay, who has uh, 17 receptions. That's tops on the uh, Texas team this year. One big problem the TCU has had, they get such a deep cushion on their secondary. They invite you to throw the square out pattern, and that stuff is open all day long. You can run the out, run the out, then route, run an out and an up against them. But they're starting Brooks, number 15, the freshman, this afternoon. There you saw the starting line and linebackers on defense for TCU. Little swing pass is complete. That's Darren Norris, and Norris uh, is run down at about the 28-yard line by Tony Brooks, who made the first hit along with Garden Littles. Littles, the uh, strong safety, or rover, as TCU actually uh, calls him. Now, what's Norris, the junior college transfer from California? Stafford comes back, and he starts to move out a little bit. He's much better throwing on the run. Norris has got those great fullback-type legs. He's got better balance and direction than you would think for a guy as stocky as he is. 55% passer is Stafford, although he is quite a runner. First down. Give inside to Hunter as Hunter breaks across the 25 to about the 23-yard line. Pick up of maybe five. Ron Lewis, who is starting for Trent Edwards in this game. We had Edwards mentioned there, but Lewis actually drew the start because, uh, well, just the coach's decision primarily. And it'll be second down. Gain of four on that play, second and six. Leanne Manley's offensive line led by the All-American number 74, Gene Chilton, who's definitely going to be a first-round pick in the NFL draft. Wide receivers on both sides of the field now. Gay is on the right. The play goes to the left, and it's going to be short of the first down, I believe, as Hunter is stacked up after a gain of a two or three yards. Newton and Little, again, the defensive backs making the stop. They're making a lot of the tackles early, which means Texas is getting that three, four, five yards on the play. It'll be a third down and two. There's the TCU defensive back uh, situation. Billy Jones uh, actually, I believe, was pulled out in favor of Tony Brooks. Uh, but Billy had been starting most of the year. Third down and two. Power eye formation on the short yardage. And a flag. That play doesn't yeah. count. Looks like 81 McRae, who's starting in place of the injured William Harris, who's probably high school in Houston, went off sides. That's a big uh, mistake for Texas. It will make it a third down and about eight as opposed to third and a long two, maybe third and seven, but uh, in any event, it, it's a mo mistake that will hurt them. Now they're bringing in the smaller receivers as Everett Gay and Russell Hayes come in, and a couple of the big guys come out. Ball start, offense, still third down. Third and eight. TCU's defense, Greg, very young, very strappy. They'll hang in there. If there's one problem, being young, being aggressive, being overeager, they're very susceptible to trap plays, especially with this veteran offensive line that Texas has. Gay wide right. McCray winds up tight on the left side. Now in motion, that's Hayes. And a fumble, but picked up by Stafford. He may, well, no, he may not. Well, he might make something out of that, but as it turned out, it's... Uh, cost the Longhorns a chance to move in closer. Scott Harris on the stop. He did the wise thing there. He did not run try to make something when nothing was there. He took the loss to say it's going to be a long day. Well, it appears the ball hits the man in motion right there. Hits number 14 in the hip. And Brett Stafford, do I, don't I not? Better take Sack City and go down. So Jeff Ward will try a longest field goal. A 48-yard field goal. There you see the numbers on Jeff. Don't forget he's got a 55 yard that won the ball game against Arkansas. Oh, he can reach it. He's got the wind behind him, what little there is, and it's long enough, and it is good. So Texas on the scoreboard first. Texas three, TCU nothing, 10.05 to go in the first period of play on home sports entertainment. Greg, what's, a, what's impressive in a situation like that, Greg, if there's adversity, you're coming down, you get the punt, you're moving the chains, you're doing everything right, you have the offside, you have the fumble, and instead of something going for naught, you end up with three points on the board anyway. And Ward comes out, he's so automatic. Jim Wacker across the way yelling, hey, we're proud of you guys on defense. You took seven, which was possible, turned it into three. Jeff Ward now 
has kicked 15 of or 16 of 21. He is just one field goal behind John Goodson's single season UT record of 17 set in 79. So told you we we're going to talk about the kickers. Both kickers now are with, within one field goal of uh, some records. So uh, we'll keep you posted certainly as the game continues. Petrie and Brooks are back to return the kickoff from Ward as we get set uh, to put the ball back in play. Texas leading 3-0 on the 48-yard field goal. 10.05 to go in the first period. The lights are on here on this gray day at uh, Austin. Greg, you know, it's hard to know which coach believes in the power of positive thinking more. Wacker or Akers? Both of them are very positive, very optimistic. But Wacker's got to be telling his defense, hey, you guys held them. You did a good job there. And the kickoff will be returned. Taking it about the two-yard line. Brooks, and Brooks fights for the 20, and that's as far as he's going to get. Stacked up by a pile of people on the special teams. Well, we'll mention Mr. Taylor, number 37, one of those that got there first. It'll be first down, and 10 yards to go for the TCU Horn Frogs. TCU has not thrown the ball well this year. Raskin, 45% on 54 out of 121, 789 yards, eight interceptions. Five touchdowns and there's the give inside for very short yardage maybe a yard or all or Bobby Davis uh, one thing that of course Barry it may maybe get you comment on this when you run an option type offense you're supposed to hold on to the ball and decide whether you're going to give it to him or not but notice we notice with TCU it's almost a wrestling match sometimes yeah there we saw also in the Baylor ball game where there were three times when the fullback took the ball much to the surprise and the chagrin of the quarterback it all comes with experience getting reps and timing only a one-yard gain this time. The pitch back comes to Jeffrey. Jeffrey gets one block, cuts outside, and only is able to gain a couple of yards. McKinney, 86, does a nice job of, uh, of stringing that play out, letting the cornerback come up and make the force. Number six, uh, Stephen Braggs. McKinney. Uh, that's, that's good coordinated defense. They'll go, to the, they'll go to the fake dive. The pitch, as McKinney holds his ground, says, I'm not going to be fooled. He boxes out. The safety sacrifices himself. And here comes Bragg up on the force. It's a third down and five. Ball on the 25-yard line, just across the 25. Two wide receivers at the bottom of the screen. Rasco's looking for the inside man. That's pass interference. Yep, flag Good down. Call. As uh, tackling a little bit early that time was uh, Tony Tillman. I think also in there was, uh, let's see, was that? Uh, yeah, Tillman was in there, number 80. Or number 11. This one comes down in the category of take your pick where the flag is. He got Burnett is who he got. Yeah, no question. He got him there uh, in, in clear view of the official. We got a flag down where there could be holding up in the offensive line. Defense. Ooh. Automatic first down at the spot of the foul. All right. They just, I guess they both marked this. the same flag was for the same play, apparently. Rascal's got to have a big day throwing. He cannot be tentative. He's got to throw the ball with more zip. First down, ball up to 35. Rasco on the give, and Jeffrey struggles forward for about three. Brian Espinoza making the stop. He'll be a busy man. Brian will also read the uh, steel hammer if he gets in there. I know steel hammer was hurt a little bit. Those tackles, because PCU, and we've seen them in the last three or four weeks, really will run off tackle on that uh, give a lot. They're, they're satisfied with two or three if they can uh, if they can consistently get it. Wide to the top of the screen is Keith Burnett. Davis doesn't take it. Now does on the pitch across the 40-yard line to about the 42. He's still short of the first down by about two. Chris Doolivan, the... Uh, Wide uh, weak side linebacker along with Richard Peavy in on the uh, tackle. Peavy is a great story. Here's a kid who started as a freshman, ripped up his knee, just making a cut. They never thought he'd be able to play football again. He, Edwin Simmons, Jerome Johnson, about 15 other t sippers worked out with Tom Williams at Coach's Clinic during the summer. Peavy re rehabilitated the knee, and he said right from the start, I'm going to start and play football this year. Offense. Still second down. Well, you saw that uh, uh, as Barry was relating the story, and it was a certainly severe penalty. Second down and more than 20. Rasko looks to throw, but the rush gets him. 
Hanging through was James McKinney, the defensive left end, the Austin native, and it is now third down and almost forget it time. McKinney reminds me so much of Alan Level of the Rockets. When he's good, he's terrific. When he's bad, he's terrible. He, he comes free there, and you cannot let him do that. He's got great quickness. He's an Austin product. A big play fast rusher. The wrap on him, lack of consistency. One wide man on this, Keith Burnett, are extremely wide. Jared Delaney is also down. There's a little swing pass uh, deflected, taken off by Bobby Davis. Now, he's got to go past uh, the 45, and he's not anywhere close. He gets up to the 30-yard line and is run out. It's fourth down. TCU will have to kick it away. There's the disadvantage of those penalties. That was not a bad play, but they had to go too far. Chris Becker coming into punt. It's your basic naked screen there. There was absolutely no one home. They suckered him in okay, but there was no blocking wall out here. So after getting the big break on the pass interference, TCU can't convert. Metcalf back to receive the punt, which is high and relatively short, taken on the 30-yard line and kick. That ball is loose and still loose, and TCU can't pick it up because the uh, Texas defender, there you see him, number 28, he just pushed the, uh, he pushed now, the- Now, January, uh, the linebacker makes a heads up play here. He sees a touchdown right there for Texas. Metcalf, I got it, I got it. No, I don't have it. It goes right to my hands. TCU kicks the ball. So what does January do? Out of my way, I want the football. Yes, sir, it bounces right back to me. Thank you very much, and we'll take it. And that one play, Greg, can really typify how things have gone. Last week in the game, you and Ray Alborn did. There were three interceptions for Roscoe, and all of them were on deflections. Well, a clipping call. And that may have been on the push, Barry, because... Yeah, that, that's what the call was. You have to call something because you can't go out and start pushing around people. Fred Akers, the number 12 in his background, his son Danny Akers, who's been the holder this year for Jeff Ward. So this poor guy is sort of like Ray to Dangerfield. He gets no respect. He's won only 90 ball games here. He's had him on the verge of a national championship. He's had him in the Cotton Bowl. And people still say, what have you done for me lately? I think he's done a tremendous coaching job this year. And it's probably more gratifying this year for him uh, to see how a number of these guys respond to the previous Texas clubs. Flipping by the orange team. Penalty declined. First down, orange. All right, that had to do with where it took place, obviously, because it was upfield a little bit further. And so TCU decides to leave it on the 10-yard line where the play ended. Actually, that was an outstanding play by January because, hey, if he doesn't do it, TCU gets the football. First down. Hunter is tripped up uh, just shy of the line of scrimmage. Charles Hunter, number 26, the ball carrier. David Spradlin, uh, who drew the start today in place of David Caldwell at the left end spot, the one who grabbed him around the ankles. They say that David can play anywhere. Did a pretty good job on that one, didn't he? 6'2", 230-pound junior out of Seminole, Texas. Second and 11. Hunter has been tough to stop most of the year. He's averaged five yards a carry. Second down. There's Stafford. High formation behind him. Again, to give to Hunter as he struggles for yards that weren't really there. He gained about three or four up to about the 14 before he is stopped. Third down. Crucial defensive series here for TCU. They got it back deep. They thought they had a touchdown. They can't let Texas they move out to midfield on this. They got to get in the punt and try to establish some decent field position, Greg. Kevin Dean made that last tackle. We might mention Kevin because he was uh, he was listed as doubtful for this one with a knee problem, but doubts have been erased. Third down and eight. The rush is on. Stafford falls at the three. What another great defensive play by Spradlin. Well, Spradlin does a heck of a job on that play. And you can see it right now. Watch how he gets mobbed when he runs over to that sideline. There's Brett Stafford. He's going to roll left. He's got a lot of protection. Here comes Benson coming in, but he's still out of shape. He can't get there. Spradlin, does he miss him? He says enough. Gets him off his impetus. Enough to knock him down there. High five on the far sideline. Well, Pelchick is going to have to punt from the three-yard line. That means he's going to be back the maximum distance he can be. And that fair foot is awfully cold right now. <laughs> he's wiping it off. Tony Brooks is a single safety at about the 45. He got the kick away, and he has kicked it past Brooks. 
Oh, and Brooks is going to let it bounce as boy did Texas get out of hole there. Picks it up at the 20. A flag is thrown. And I'm not sure why. I didn't see his offensive player, but we'll figure it out in just a moment. And we'll figure out exactly what the flag was for. I did not see uh, anyone flip. I didn't see another teammate nearby. I didn't see it at all, Greg. It looked like two Texas players. Well, here, let's see this ball. Two on the tackle. Another flip. It's a 68-yard punt. We'll sort it out, and we'll be back. You stay with us right here on HSE. The Longhorns 3, the Horn Frogs nothing in the first quarter. Getting from point A to point B isn't always so simple, especially in and around Houston. That's why you need a car like the Front Wheel Drive 86 Buick Century. New European styling on the outside, traditional Buick luxury on the inside. Best of all, your Houston Buick dealers have just received a special shipment of 200 new centuries. Better hurry though, they'll go fast. Because when point A to point B looks like this, any more than 86 Century is simply a point well taken. I'm a peaceful man. I wouldn't hurt a fly. <laughs> but now I'm going to get out of line. I'm going to sign up for direct deposit, so I'll never have to stand in line with my government check again. With direct deposit, my money goes directly to my account automatically. That frees up my time for other things. <laughs> like my experiments. <laughs> it's direct deposit wherever you have your check in your savings account. <laughs> oh, come on. Get out of line. Uh, as we uh, get set for the series from TCU, there was a quick call that you saw before we took the break. So the 68-yard punt plus the penalty. What a difference that was. Texas had the ball on their own three. Now TCU has it on its own 13. It's a big loose by Davis. And Davis gets down to about the 45 or more before he's run out of bounds. Chris Dillman making the stop, but Davis, Bobby Davis, the freshman redshirt from Glenville, Texas, Pretty quick runner for Great acceleration. Seven. Watch the footwork here on the part of Davis. He bursts through, goes to the outside with a little stutter step, and just leaves PB, who's got excellent speed. The kid really accelerates. That was a 30-yard pickup for Davis, and it's first down for TCU. So that poor field position, forget it. As you see Davis's stats coming in. Rasco keeps it, and... Meets his maker, uh, so to speak, after a two-yard gain. Richard Peavy, the man who was beaten on that last play, wasn't beaten on that one. Peavy out of Houston, Washington. You know, it doesn't look like much on that last play, but five games ago, Rascal would have made that, may have coughed the ball up. Now he's a little bit more poised. He's reading and reacting much better to the defenses. Well, he is going to play virtually every down. In fact, yep. if he doesn't play every down, they will not use... Ron Giles, who is the... Giles is a red shirt. Yeah, back at quarterback. They don't want to use him at all. They'll use a the cornerback, which they did last week. There's a pitch back. And again, Davis is outside. Across the 45, down to about the 44. Richard Peavy making a stop. That is a first down. So much more confident is David Wasco, the freshman from Westchester High School. Just watch him right now. He'll run down. He'll take the dive on the zero option. He'll run down. Get the commitment from Aldridge. Sacrifices his body, and Davis has got this tremendous footwork. First down, the ball on the, across the 45, that's about the 44-yard line. Up, oh, we'll have a flag here. Yeah, we had the defense jumps, and of course they were okay, they got back, and that got the offensive line a little antsy, and so that'll be five against PC oh, on flight certain. Espinosa works, and then came right back. Knock off five, TCU will put the ball back on about the 49-yard line in the Texas territory. 3-0 is the score on a 48-yard Jeff Ward field goal at about 10.05 in the first period. We've got three minutes and 32 seconds to go in the first quarter now. It is still 3-0 Texas. Lacker calling the play, sending Burnett, uh, number 84, into the ball game. He's the kid from Houston, Houston Yates High School. His nickname is Sweetness because he's so sweet and under control. Runs like poetry in motion the way he glides. First down and 15. There's David Rasko. And a give inside for short yardage, maybe a yard. That's all Bobby Davis. Ty Allard, the top tackler on this uh, Texas team, has 84. 
coming into this game, and I think that's his first of today, so we'll give him 85. That'll be the first of many. We'll be calling the number from the former North Fork High School All-American, a real blue chipper, both on and off the field, a really classy human being who reminds me so much of Jack Ham, Greg, the former Pittsburgh Steelers great. He's going to have that kind of potential in the NFL. Bobby Davis doing well, you'd have to say. Nine yards of carry. Straight drop back now, out of the pocket. If he can get past the defense, he's got some room, but he throws it in the ground. He couldn't turn the corner. He had a whole bunch of orange suits chasing him. Ty Allard finally the man that forced him out, but if he could have turned the corner at about the 50, he might have had some room because the defense would have been behind him, as you'll see here. Okay, he makes the, the 360 turn. Here comes uh, Hager on the blitz. There's Allard, we just talked about a moment ago. Tailing down from the backside. Espinosa right in his face. I better unload this football. And he grounded. He put it right in the dirt or in the AstroTurf. It's third down and 12. Texas, of course, plays so much man-to-man -man football. Burnett goes out on the right side. A little short pass inside, incomplete. That was intended for Ricky Stone, the flex end, but uh, Gerard Senegal was right there along with Kip Cooper, who was putting some pressure on her. It'll be a fourth down. So we'll have uh, Chris Becker in to kick again. And Eric Metcalf back. Metcalf had one go right through the hands on the last punt. He's going to fair catch it at the 12. TCU doing a good job not allowing Texas good Burn field in. position. And so Texas will come on. Next weekend, we'll be taking you up to Fort Worth and Eamon Carter Stadium as the TCU Horn Frogs take on the Texas Aggies. That game with uh, important ramifications for A&M's bowl picture. We'll have it for you on a delayed basis next Saturday night at 10.30 and Sunday at 9 o'clock. That's Texas A&M versus TCU next weekend on Home Sports Entertainment. All right, partner, I'm going to put you on the spot. The game will be played tonight at Kyle Field. The Aggies against the Hogs. Who do you like, Greg? Home game, I'll go with the Aggies. Okay, I'll take A&M by four. Michigan, 31, Minnesota, zero. I'll tell you, when we're doing one of these delayed games, Brad, everyone will remember that we're right or wrong. <laughs> See these games live, no one remembers, but uh, boy, when they're delayed, they, they're watching it, and the other one's almost, maybe almost over. It's 3-0 here with 2 minutes and 24 seconds to go in the first period. Texas leads. They've got the ball on their own 13. It goes to the uh, fullback hunter, or tailback hunter. He gets across the uh, 15 to about the 16, 17-yard line. Ron Lewis and Mitchell Benson in on the stop. Mitchell Benson, we talked about him last week with the touchdown. Uh, Fort Worth, the 200. They got him 265 pounds at the start of the season, so <laughs> Mitchell's put on a few. Yeah, he, he was too many meals. You know, the thing about him, he was a good basketball player. That's the thing. He really... And so was the refrigerator. Perry can uh, yeah. stuff the ball at 6'3". Second down and six. Again, Hunter, he's got some room outside. He may have the first down. He was brought down right about at the 23-yard line. You saw the marker. That's not the official marker, though. It's on the other side. Floyd Terrell ran him down. They will uh, perhaps have to measure this. The official marker is on the other side of the field. It will be an official timeout. Greg, you spoke with Charles Hunter before the ball game. He appeared uh, almost surprised that he set a new freshman Texas record for rushing last week, didn't he? Well, he must not read the papers because I'm sure that it was in the Austin papers that he did. Yeah, he, he said that he didn't know it until I mentioned it. That's sort of unusual. He had 187 yards rushing last week, and that was the most ever for a Texas freshman. Yeah, there's depth on this Texas team now with Edwin Simmons able to play and, and Hunter and, of course, Metcalf, who's a speedster. They could put in there if they need him in there. Darren Norris. Fred Akers has ever had this kind of firepower. And I'll tell you, you mentioned Mr. Simmons. We'll develop uh, the Edwin Simmons story a little bit later on. He is pointing for next week against Baylor and against Texas A&M. It is a real miraculous story on the comeback of Edwin Simmons. As you saw, it is just short of a first down, so it'll be a third down and about one. There, they finally changed. TCU staying in a basic 5-2 package. They've got the uh, power eye type formation, and a quarterback will keep it, and Stafford has the first down to about the 24-5-yard line. 
Stafford uh, knows what the comfort zone is. It's right off the hip of number 74, Big Gene Shelton. He was much quicker this year. He lost around 15 pounds. The strongest kid here in the uh, University of Texas football team. He will be a pro prospect in the first round. The big question there, Greg, do they play him at center? and make a Remington or a Mike Webster or a guard and turn him into a John Anna Mike Muncher. Well, the thing is, it's not as much of a gamble as with some players because he's played all of those places in college. Uh, he's been offensive tackle and he's been a center. You see the give inside for a power move near the 30-yard line. Pickup of about five as Hunter again carries. That doesn't look pretty, there. but we're talking about Shelton. What do they do? They run right up the middle. No fancy blocking scheme at all. Lee and Manley just said straight ahead, man blocking, and Hunter reads where the, where the crease is and just runs to it. Charles Hunter out of that, I guess you could almost call it a football factory at Odessa. Odessa Permian. Second down and five. And Hunter again on the carry, and they were waiting for him. He has stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Big Mitchell Benson comes through the Fort Worth freshman. Now Mitchell, like so many of these TCU guys, is a true freshman. Yeah, he's bow-legged and does not look like he's an athlete, but he's very deceiving. He just sheds a blocker and just comes right through there. And uh, he doesn't have to worry about looking at the film. John Stewart's going to kind of uh, dig a little trench back uh, tomorrow when they take a look at that Well, he missed his assignment. They're down at five. Play action back to throw. The looping pass is complete. That's Jerome Johnson, the uh, fullback, and he has run out of bounds at about the 43-yard line. It's a first down. Philanda Newton got to him, but not in time. As Johnson hands the ball for the handles the ball for the first time, and he has the first down. Johnson is a kid whose knee was so banged up they never thought he'd play. Worked out with Tom Williams at coaches. They rehabilitated the knee, and he's got surprising speed. Good footwork there. Tries to avoid the hit. Very, very strong. I'm going to tell you something, Greg. He's going to end up in the National Football League next year as a fifth back for somebody. He may not get drafted at all, but he will make somebody's club because he's so fundamentally sound. Well, we've reached the end of the first quarter, and at the end of one, it is the Texas Longhorns 3, the TCU Horn Frogs nothing. You stay with us. We'll be back with more on Home Sports Entertainment. It's a special kind of spirit that rises in us all. We hear a cry for help, we're there to answer the call. We're a people who share triumphs, but we share our troubles too. It seems in times of need we're there to do all that we can do. could use a hand, your hand, your time, your money, maybe even a bit of yourself. Don't die.